If you're a beginner trader, there are extremely simple and powerful option strategies that can be learned in minutes and traded easily with minimal capital. In this video, we'll teach you the top three. I'm Mike Bellafuri, and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City and proud to have developed number seven and even eight figure per year traders. We hope you discover this is the top YouTube channel to help you grow your trading account. Hi, I'm Seth Freiberg. I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan. And we're constantly being approached by beginner options traders who are excited about trading options because they've heard about the cash income potential, but they have the impression that options are just too complicated and they don't have the confidence that they'll actually be able to successfully trade options for income. But in this video, we're going to prove that notion wrong by showing you how to set up three easy to learn option strategies in minutes. And once you understand them and the logic behind them, you can use them almost immediately because they're so easy to understand. And so in this video, we're gonna be teaching you the three easiest option strategies for beginning options traders to incorporate into their trading. Now, if you're new to options trading and you don't know much about options and how they work, we've actually created a video for you to understand options basics. And if you click the video appearing on your screen right now, that's going to lay the groundwork for your understanding the three strategies we're going to be teaching you in this video. Then when you're finished, you can come back and watch the rest of this video. The first strategy we'd like to teach you couldn't be easier. It's known as the cash secured put. And here's how it works. Let's head back to the beginning of 2023 and take a look at IBM stock, which had rallied nicely in the fourth quarter of 2022, up nearly 20% for the quarter, closing at 141.55 on the first trading day of 2023, which was January 3rd. And it's also important to keep in mind that this stock pays a dividend of $1.66 a quarter, which works out to a dividend yield of 4.69% for a stock trading at 141.55 at the beginning of the year as IBM was. Okay, so let's say that on that day, you pulled up an options chain expiring a month later on February 3rd, and you decided to go ahead and sell a put at the 134 strike price, about 5% below the current trading price of IBM, with the premise that if IBM drops to that price, the stock is a bargain and will be happy to own the shares at 134 if the one we sold the put to decides to exercise his put, which he would only do if the stock was trading at or below 134, obviously. Otherwise, it would make no sense. And so when a trader does that, when he sells a single put, that trade is known as a cash secured put. And you'll understand in a minute why it has that particular name. So let's turn to what's happened here from a cash flow perspective. And as you saw, we sold the put option for a price of $2.12. But remember, each option represents the right for the put owner to get $134 per share for 100 shares of IBM if he exercises the option. Therefore, you multiply that by 100, and that results in you receiving a payment of $212 in cash in your account as soon as you execute the transaction. And since you may be called upon to buy those shares because you have sold that put, you're going to have to have at least $13,400 in your account, as you can see from the calculation, in order to pay the $134 per share for 100 shares if the put is executed. And so that is why this trade is called a cash secured put, because that thirteen four is what you are securing the trade with when you first enter into it. Okay, so now let's move to February 3rd, the day the put option expired. And as you can see, IBM closed at 136.94. And so what that means is that the 134 put option, that simply expires worthless. Why? Well, think about it. Who's going to exercise their right to sell 100 shares of IBM at 134 when the stock is trading at 136.94? And so the option just expires worthless. And our trade profit is the original $212 we got for selling the option in the first place. Okay, so now 
at this point, most traders would continue a campaign of selling the 134 put each month with the conviction that that's a good entry price for the stock. And so in order to keep selling puts at 134, he'll go out to the next month, to the March expiration. And as you can see on that day, the 134 put option was selling for $1.93. And so again, that translates into a cash increase in his account of $193. But this time, if we move forward to March 3rd, the day this put option expired, you can see that IBM actually sold off down to 129.64, which means now it actually does make sense for the put owner, the person we sold the put to, to exercise the option to sell the shares for $134 a share when they're trading below 130. And so it, it almost certainly will be exercised, in which case we will be obligated to buy the shares for $134 per share. And so the result is that we buy the shares as we're required to do at 134 per share and our scorecard for cash flow from the cash secured puts campaign is $405 so far. And this is the exact point in the lesson when the second simple strategy for beginner options traders begins. And that is known as the covered call strategy. Now, the covered call strategy assumes that you own the 100 shares of stock. And in this case, we do own the 100 shares because we were just assigned those as a result of our having sold that put at 134. And so once we are assigned those shares, then we can pull up an options chain expiring a month later in April, the April 6th options chain, and we go ahead and sell a call this time at the exact same strike, that 134 strike for which we'd receive a price of $1.10. And when we do that, when we sell calls in relation to shares of stock we own, that transaction is known as a covered call because we now have 100 shares. And so if the stock rallies above 134 by April 6th, then the owner of the call that we sold has the right to buy those shares from us at 134, which means that we better have those shares in our account to sell on that day. And so the fact that we do in fact own those shares makes this transaction a covered call because the short call obligation is taken care of. In other words, it's covered by the 100 shares that we own. And so whether you receive the shares by having them assigned to you through a cash secured put as happened in this case, or you just simply own the shares in your portfolio, you can use those shares as a cash producing machine for yourself by selling calls against those shares, provided that you're willing to sell those shares at the strike price of the call, which in this case is 134. And it's important to understand why we chose 134 as the strike price of the calls we've chosen. And that is because that's what we paid for the shares, 134, when they were assigned to us by the cash secured put. And so we don't want to have to sell those shares at a loss like we would at a lower strike price, say 133 or 132. We set instead the strike price at our original share acquisition price to be safe should the stock rally. And so again, for selling that call, we received the income of $110 using the same kind of math that we did in the case of the cash secured put, because in this case, we're selling the right to buy 100 shares of stock from us. And so the price of the option is multiplied by 100 to arrive at the additional cash flow we get for selling the call. Okay, so moving forward now to April 6th, as you can see, the stock hardly moved from when we first sold the 134 call. And so as a result, the call this time expires with no value. We pocket the call premium for $110. And the reason is that since there's no reason for anyone to exercise their right to buy shares at 134 with a stock trading at a lower price in the open market, the trader simply pockets the 110 in premium that he collected when he first sold the call. And so we just go back in again, resuming our selling of calls into the next month, May, just like we did when we were selling the puts, we just start selling calls every month. And for example, uh, the May 134 call that we, that we sell is priced at $2.36. So that brought in $236. And so summarizing what happened over the next several months 
including the first covered call we sold in April, you can see that each month we sold the 134 covered call, receiving as little as $7 one month and as much as $263. And we do this each month, April through August. And for each of April, May, June, and July, the stock closed below 134 in the day, day it expired, as you can see. And so the call option expired worthless and the trader just pocketed the call premium in each case. Okay, so now August is interesting because in August, IBM rallied up to 144.25. And so on expiration day or before, the shares would have been called away by the owner of that 134 call, meaning the shares were sold at exactly the same price as they were assigned to us initially when we were selling the 134 puts. And so therefore, there isn't any realized gain or realized loss on the shares. So that's just like a zero from a trading perspective. Okay, so we've seen that cash secured puts and covered calls both produce cash income every month. But here's what's really interesting. While we own the shares of IBM in that period from March through August, we also received a dividend because remember, IBM issues a $1.66 dividend each quarter. And so let's take a look at all of the cash flow that we received during the entire period that we were either selling the cash secured puts on IBM or selling covered calls once we were signed the IBM shares at 134. And as you can see, we have a mix of cash secured put income, covered call income, and even a dividend for $166, which when all combined over the eight month period, January through August of 2023, result in $1,410 in cash income from this program, which remember, lasted only eight months. And so when you compare our options and dividend campaign to simply owning the IBM shares, there's no contest. The options campaign yielded more than double the cash that owning the shares would have yielded in only eight months. And now you know why strategy number one, the cash secured put strategy, and strategy number two, the covered call strategy, are so popular. Move on to our final strategy for beginners, and that strategy is called the calendar spread. And the best way to share with you the power of the calendar spread is to give you another example using IBM. And so let's head back to June 2nd, 2023, the first Friday in June. And if you remember, IBM closed at 132.42 that day. So let's say that we pull up an options chain uh, expiring in about a month, that July 7th options chain, and we go ahead and sell 25 of the 132 puts just below where the stock's trading. And at the same time, we buy 25 of the 132 puts expiring a week later on July 14th. Well, when we do that, selling an option at a strike price in a closer expiration and buying an option at the same strike price in a later expiration, that combination is referred to as a calendar spread by options traders. And the cash flow of this trade looks like this, starting with the cost of the 25 options we bought expiring on July 14th, which cost us $6,075, as you can see from the calculation. But remember, we also sold those 25 puts expiring a week earlier on July 7th, for which we received $5,350. So you subtract that, netting the cost of the calendar spread down to just $725, which is not unusual because calendar spreads can be very cheap to enter and are therefore a good trade for smaller accounts, by the way. And so at this point, you might be wondering, why would we sell a put at the same strike price as buying a put in a later expiration. It seems like it's a contradictory thing to do because selling a put would benefit from a rally while buying a put would benefit from a sell-off. So why would you do both? And let's move to the day the short options expires, July 7th, and you're going to see why. And so moving to that date, you can see that the stock hardly moved at all from the day we initiated the trade to the day the short puts expire with the stock closing at just over 132 that day. And so at 3.55 p.m., just as the market was about to close, 
let's take a look at the pricing of the options position. And this is very important to understand. You see, with IBM trading at 132.10, five minutes before the 25 short 132 put options are ready to expire, the options only have a little bit of value left because if the stock doesn't drop below 132 by 4 p.m., those 25 short 132 put options are ready to expire and therefore have just a little bit of value left. Again, because if the stock doesn't fall below 132, no one will exercise their right to sell the shares at 132, which you would only do if the stock was trading below that. And so those go out with zero value five minutes later. Thus, five minutes before, they have a very, very small price of five cents. But the ones expiring a week later, well, those are still worth 92 cents. Why? Because there's a full week left for the stock to get below 132, not just five minutes. And so as owners of those puts, if IBM were you know, to really drop in the next week, those puts could become very, very valuable, actually. And so they're going to have plenty of value seven days from expiration to cover that possibility. And that value is called the time value in an option. And so even though we received over $2 initially for the ones we sold and an even larger amount for the ones we bought, the fact is that both options lost value. But the short options lost essentially all of their value, while the long options retained a fair amount of value. And so what does this all mean in terms of our trade? Well, you see, if we wanted to close the calendar trade at this point, five minutes before the market expires on the day the short options are going to expire, we would simply sell the long options we own for 92 cents, which as you can see from the calculation, results in cash proceeds of $2,300. And at the same time, we're going to buy back the short options we sold for five cents, resulting in a cost of $125. And then we've got to subtract out the initial cost of the calendar spread, which was $725, remember. So you can see that as a result, netting it all down, the final profit on the trade is $1,450, which just coincidentally is exactly a 200% return in a month, which is obviously extraordinary. Now, it's important to understand that not every calendar trade is going to go this perfectly and this smoothly, and there will be varying amounts of wins and losses on this trade. But the calendar spread is a very powerful strategy, which once mastered, can be a game changer for options traders and is in fact a popular strategy here on our trade desk at SNB. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is that option strategies do not need to be complicated at all. The cash secured put involves selling as little as one put option, for example. It, it can't get much simpler than that. And so anyone who says that options trading is too complex has never heard of the three strategies we just shared with you today. Simple, powerful strategies that professional options traders use all the time to produce cash flow and profits for themselves and the trading firms that provide them the capital to make these trades. Now, by the way, if you're serious about your trading, you're going to want to check out the free intensive options class that we're currently running, where we'll teach you three real world option strategies that our professional options traders use all the time. Just click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen, or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free workshop directly. It really is a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now before you miss it.